everyone, now Julian here. Welcome to a very special episode of Takes the Road. Today I'm on my way to the Vauxhall Heritage Centre in Luton and I'm taking my trusty Vauxhall voice ride on for the trip. And that's because this car was actually first registered and owned by Vauxhall Motor Company Limited in Luton. So basically I'm taking this car back home, back to where its journey first started. And I can't wait to check out the Heritage Centre and see all the cool old Vauxhalls that they've got in the museum there and to meet the guys that look after the cars and just to, you know, take this car back to where his journey first started. It's going to be very, very cool. And hopefully I'll get to stop off at a couple of bits of the uh, old Vauxhall factory and get a few photos, a few video clips. And yeah, I've got a hundred plus mile journey ahead of me on the old motorway, but I'm sure the voice ride will waft me along in supreme comfort. It's just a pity about the weather. It's uh, very grey, misty and damp out. Not ideal weather for having an old classic out on the road, but hey, off to Luke we go. Well, I've arrived at Luton, hooray! And I can just see the Vauxhall Energy Centre up ahead. A bit of a long drive, two hours and 15 minutes on the motorway. The weather hasn't been particularly brilliant, very wet and miserable, but that doesn't matter now because the Vauxhall is home. The Viceroy has arrived back in Luton, back to where its journey started here in the UK. I can't wait to meet the team at the Vauxhall Energy Centre. Let's go and say hello. How are you? Not bad. I would shake your hand, Andy and Terry, but I can see you're busy with an engine here. You end up with a dirty end. Yeah, I would. Not very good with the camera gear and the pristine voice right behind me, but anyway. <laughs> so what are you guys doing here? Well, this is the engine out of the, uh, the sewer that runs up behind us. Um, we're just investigating why it's got a lack of oil pressure. Okay. No, no, you can see that there's uh, damage on certain oil oh, yeah, bearing journal. That, That's yeah. the only one I've taken off. Yeah, there's a bit of wear there, aren't there? Yeah, a bit no. of a mystery as to what's going on. So I've done this before, hasn't it? It has, yeah. Oh. What's the look? Worse, worse than this last time, though. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. So guys, I brought my Vauxhall Viceroy over if you guys have a look. And uh, there it is, in all yeah. its shining beauty. Um, Those mud flaps you fitted in 1982 are still there too. Yeah, they're, still hang they're hanging on well, <laughs> they're hanging on well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Must have done a good job of them. Quite a rarity, that, because he's still got the mud flaps on. So what is it you guys do here at the Heritage Centre? Uh, well, basically maintain the company's historic fleet of vehicles. Okay. Um, we're up to about 70, 70, 70 vehicles now. Vehicles ah, now. Yeah. Quite yeah, it's quite a collection. They span from 1903 to 2008. Wow. Um, impressive. Yeah, so it keeps us busy. Definitely. <laughs> Plus there's all the admin work that goes along with it as well. All the MOTs. And MOTs, tax. road tax. So um, vehicle loan bookings and such like, um, and trying to source parts. <laughs> that's quite a time consuming. Yeah, though. that's right, yeah. And even yeah. though you're a main manufacturer, heritage, museum, yes. slash centre, it's yeah. still hard for you guys to get parts. Yeah, yeah everybody strange. seems to think that we've got yeah. a massive store of um, old parts, new old stock parts, but no, we have to source them the same as you would. You know? It's not the case, unfortunately. That's our little storeroom over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's running pretty much dry at the moment. I was going to say, I need a few little bits for my voice yeah. ride. I thought I might be able to get some here, but... We wish. Yeah. So do you guys want to have a look at the voice ride? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. Cool. So guys, this is my 1982 Vauxhall voice ride. And the cool thing about this car is it was first registered to Vauxhall here in Newton, right at the factory. Yeah, we thought it might have been when we saw the Vauxhall GM Opal logo on the number plate. A bit of a hint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the number plate is a local Luton yeah, plate. It's right, DPP, yeah, it's DPP, yeah. That's right, yeah. Uh, I could have, could have worked on this as an apprentice, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah, because uh, Andy and myself started in 1979 wow. as apprentices, and um, I was actually at the service department at the time. This, this would have uh, uh, been registered. Wow. So. So you probably actually could have maybe seen this car. Yeah, yeah have a today. look at the service yeah. book. Yeah, so if you recognise yeah, it. Yeah, I might recognise it. Yeah. It was a long while ago. Yeah, this is the original service book. 
It's a little bit, a little bit torn places, but um, it still, it still exists. That's still the exists. important thing. So it's got the owner certificate and some details on it there. Uh, service station phone number, Odell. Odell. I think that was Phil Odell. I think, okay. I think that was Phil Odell that signed that, yeah. Oh, you remember, you remember, yeah. you actually remember yeah. the, the guy that would have done that? Yeah, it's my world, isn't it? So. Wow. <laughs> that is very, very cool. It would have been one of our fitters at the time, right. as, as we were apprentices, yeah. So the car would have arrived from, because well, obviously it came from Germany originally, yeah. it would have come over yeah. here, it would have gone through an inspection and a check before yep. being prepared for the road. That's right, yeah. Right. And with that registration plate, it would have been a, one of our company cars. Right. That is very, very cool. So what do you guys remember about the Viceroy? I can remember them being rare even back in the day. Yeah. Um, a few of our managers and execs running around in them within the company in 82. Wondering quite what they were myself as an apprentice. What yeah, about you, Jerry? Yeah, very much the same, yeah. Very, very rare. Most of them seemed to be company cars, didn't they, at the time? And the rarest of them, of them all is, was the Queen's, wasn't it? The estate. Yeah, the yeah, estate. That was a one-off, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah Colton Estate with a basically a royal front. Yeah. Hey, this is probably more solid than that, I think. Yeah, that's right. It's pretty straight, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I think, you know, given this overall, uh, the, the paint appearance is a little tired and scruffy and yeah. more, but it is a solid car. And yeah. It survived very, very, very well. So it's a credit to the original owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the interior has survived well, isn't it? It has. Do you want to have a seat inside? Yeah. Check it out. Check out the Yeah. The yeah. Cool, let's go. So what do you think guys? Yeah. It's crushed red velour. Very yeah. comfortable. Yeah, very comfortable. I've got to fall asleep yeah. in here. It's like, <laughs> it's it's sitting in an armchair, it's isn't it? It's done to the boss. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. bus bring back memories from yeah. seeing this brand new back in the day. Yeah, when you think back to 1982, it was quite up market, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Still um, comfortable, even by today's standards. Yeah. It? it is, and yeah. you know, nice I drove... soft cushions. Yeah, they are very soft. I mean, I drove here about two, two hours, 15 minutes. Yeah. And the only thing I think would be a nice addition is an armrest. Yeah. That, yeah. That's it. Apart from that, yeah. it's very, very comfortable. Yeah, the Germans weren't obsessed with hard seats in those days. No. Like they are today. It's kind of like an old Mercedes seat, yeah. kind of quite wide. The lumber's in about the right place yeah. as well. Right. Yeah. The headline is Plenty of headlines head like new, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Plenty, plenty of glass, yeah, good. good visibility. Yeah, visibility is very good on the yeah. road. It certainly is. Quickly you quickly glance realize around and see everything. How poor today's cars are for visibility, really. Yeah, definitely. Dashboard survived well. It's, it's not cracked well, at all, is it? Yeah. No. No. They did tend to crack, didn't they? Yeah, I've yeah, seen a few that have split around yeah. the middle, around where the speaker is. But yeah, it's yeah, good. Cool. Even the radio works. And the, and the remote mirrors. <laughs> yeah. Don't get any easier than that, does it? No. But only the driver got that option. Yeah. The passenger mm. passenger one was fixed. Yeah. Fixed central locking on these as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, central locking. Yeah. Which itself was a luxury item yeah, back that's in right. the day. And I think the automatic gearbox was about four hundred pound upgrade. Was it really? Yeah, yeah. It's strange because most of them were automatics, I think. Yeah. A lot so of most them people were. yeah, most people went for it. Quite a well appointed car, really, for its day. It certainly was. Yeah. It certainly was. Yeah. And the original Philips radio cassette as yeah. well. I don't have any tapes for it. No. And obviously, there's no radio stations mm. broadcasting out, so all you hear is static when you turn it on, unfortunately. <laughs> Sandy's just gone and got a tape for the stereo. It works. Yeah, it works. So, who, who's this we're listening to? <laughs> Now 13. now 13, what year is that? Now 13. <laughs> Re-released. Wow. The only way is up, Yes, yeah. is on here. I mean, it must be 1913, isn't it? Robert Palmer. She makes my day. <laughs> Which is what this car does, it makes my yeah. day. <laughs> Far as the first time. It starts yeah, well, it's isn't good, isn't it? It, it does. sounds nice. It does, it's a nice smooth engine. Yeah. Smooth, isn't it? it is. You now she's set up nicely now. Yeah. It's a good runner. Excellent. Good family size car, isn't it? It is. It is. It is. You could job and just go on holiday, couldn't you? Not worry about it. Yeah. Loads of room in the boot yeah. and stuff. 
Lovely. So guys, that was fantastic. Thanks so much for welcome. allowing me to come along to the museum and bring my voice for it. Good to meet you. Yeah, yeah no I problem. Do. Yeah, more than welcome. Yeah. I think it's really cool that you guys actually possibly, probably, more than likely worked in this car. Yeah. This very car. You actually yeah, probably that's right, it. Yeah, that's right, yeah. It takes me back a bit. Definitely. Bit of deja vu. Time. Yeah, that's it, yeah. 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 Time flies, as I say. Sure <laughs> to try to remember people's names from that long ago. Yeah. yeah I'm sure I'm right. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank that you. Was brilliant. Right. That's right. Come again. We'll do. Right. Thank you. And that's it for my trip to the Vauxhall Heritage Centre. I'm on my way home now. Back in the Viceroy, and I have to say, I had a great time with Andy and Terry at the museum great bunch of guys uh, fantastic collection of cars that they look after in the store and the thing for me that was really important about this trip was you know, just add another bit to the story of this voice room take it back home to where its story all started and the fact that both Andy and Terry remember these cars when they came out because they worked at Vauxhall in the late 1970s early 80s and they remember when these cars arrived on the scene what was even more cool was the fact that Terry actually probably sat in this car. He actually probably worked on this car when he was an apprentice of Vauxhall. And when I showed him the service book, he recognised the signature of the guy that inspected this car and signed it off, Phil Odell. I mean, how cool is that? It's just a fantastic little bit of history to add to this voice, Roy. And for me, that's what it's all about cars like this. It's about finding out its story, where it's come from, the people it's met along the way. You know, I'm part of this car story as well, and me taking up to Luton was just me adding another bit to its story, and yeah, I just loved it. It was great. So thanks guys for showing me around the museum. It's fantastic. So yeah, on my way home now, it's going to be 200 plus miles for the Viceroy. I tell you, it hasn't missed the beat the whole way. It's been fantastic. A great car. So that's it for this episode. A very special episode. It takes the road. I've got a couple more cool ones coming up with the Voice Roy soon, so stay tuned for those. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, please do so. And if you want to support the films that I make, or Takes the Road, head on over to my Patreon page, which is my Patreon Takes the Road. Take care, guys. Don't forget, just go drive.